This time, I will talk about extreme programming proposed by Kent Beck, which is one of the process models in agile development. Extreme programming uses an object-oriented approach as its preferred development paradigm. It also prescribes a set of rules and practices within the context of four process framework. We have planning, design, coding, and testing. We could compare this process framework with the five-phase generic process framework that I presented in a previous lesson. This is essentially no difference, just a compression of processes. Notice that communication or requirements gathering is conducted during the planning and deployment. B. Incremental releases of software increments. In effect, at each iteration, the software product evolves with each release increment. Take note also of the methods prescribed in XP. These methods differentiate XP from any process models or agile process models for that matter. If we will talk about XP, we will start with the first activity, which is the planning activities. The planning activities consist of a series of workshops that are participated by customers and developers. We call this workshop the planning game. In this workshop, the customers write user stories to index cards. User stories are really user requirements that are phrased or written in a structure that prescribes expected output and why it is needed. There are many methods to assigning a priority. We have Moscow methods. We also have paired comparison. We also have 100 point method. These methods are described in Scrum. The idea is that we want to know what our customers want and we also want to see which ones are common to many. By doing this, we can identify which functionalities need to be created first over many things that customer wants to see in the software. The developers, on the other hand, assign a cost to the user stories. The cost is measured in development weeks, meaning how long will it take for the user story to be developed. If the user stories assign more than three weeks, this means that there is some degree of complexity to the user requirement or the user requirement scope is relatively big for three weeks worth of work. You see, if a requirement would take a consider considerable amount of time to be completed, a lot of things can happen while it is being developed. Change can happen. That is why we would like to limit the development time for a user story to be short. Now, what happens if there is an inevitable change in user requirements? This change becomes the new user story that both customers and developers will treat or accommodate in the next increment, depending on the change's priority. If the user or if the story or the user story is assigned more than three weeks, the customers are asked to split the story into smaller stories and prioritize afterwards. We repeat the process until we achieve manageable user stories. Next activity in XP is we have the design activity. The mantra for design in XP is KIS or keep it simple because the programming paradigm to use is object oriented. CRC cards are used, so when you say CRC, that is Class Responsibility Collaborator cards are used. CRC is, by the way, the only design work product produced during the design. If design is challenging, spike solutions are created. Remember that I mentioned in the past that the pitfall of prototypes is that it might suffer from bad programming. This is addressed by XP with the use of OOP or object-oriented programming. The classes and their respective methods that are created in OOP can be easily modified during construction or coding activities. 
This process of modifying the classes is called refactoring. Refactoring is the process of changing a software system in such a way that it does not alter the external behavior of the code, yet it improves the internal structure. It is a disciplined way to clean up code that minimizes the changes of introducing bugs. In essence, when you refactor, you are improving the design of the code after it has been created or written. Refactoring binary class, it's both a design and a coding task. Next activity, I know that you love this. This is the coding activity. XP employs test-driven programming. This means that before actual coding, unit tests are first created that will test if the requirements from the user stories are implemented in code. Once the unit test has been created, the developer is better able to focus on what must be implemented to pass the test. This means that errors can dramatically be reduced, thereby reducing rework as well. Also, coding is done in pairs. We call it pair programming. In pair programming, one of the members serves as the driver, basically the one who codes, and the other one is the navigator, the one who critics, tests, or explores potential solutions to the task at hand. The two will exchange designation every day. This makes communication as an imperative skill in agile programming. Other development teams work in groups or mob instead of pairs. One member serves as the driver, while the rest of the members serve as a navigator. Like in pair programming, each will take turns as the driver. Last activity in XP, we have testing. Testing should be very easy in XP since unit tests has already been created beforehand. These tests can be collated as a suite of automated tests. As more codes are added, integration and validation testing can be done seamlessly. Integration tests how each unit of codes interact with each other when they are executed together to develop a functionality. You will learn more about testing next semester when you will already implement your design or construct a software. Don't worry, I will help you with that. Acceptance tests, by the way, also are conducted before the release of an increment. In our last slide, I want you to watch the video links presented on the screen so that you will have a glimpse of what these topics being used in the industry. Focus first on the first YouTube link, which is the extreme programming in a nutshell, but by Rachel Davis and Vicky, uh, Vicky Reed. Then later on, we will uh, focus or we will watch the Scrum YouTube video, which is on the last slide.